Hey everyone, I'm Richard. I'm Tom. And today we're going to be revisiting Radeon R9 Fury X Performance in Crossfire with a number of benchmark runs that's really designed to push the tech to its limits. I mean, previously we had issues hit hitting uh, 4K60 on the 4790K. Yeah, I mean, but we were actually hitting CPU limits in some scenarios there, which was yeah. kind of unexpected at that sort of extreme resolution. So yeah, well, where do we go from there? Well, my everyday PC, I'm lucky enough to be blessed with an 8-core Intel Core i7 5960X. Yeah, exactly. So I thought it would be cool to overclock that to 4.4 gigahertz on all cores and then benchmark Fury X in Crossfire again. Uh, just at 4K? Just at 4K, well, well, why not? Because I was really interested to see how one card and two cards would scale across both resolutions. And the answer, well, it's quite interesting. Let's check out those benchmarks. So, well, you've got the two top end AMD configuration. X at 4K and 1440p with GTA absolutely max. And you'll remember that when we tested this with the 4790K at 4K, I thought we were hitting CPU limits. So what, what have you done to address that? Uh, well, 5960X, <laughs> uh, basically eight cores, 4.4 gigahertz versus four cores at 4.6. And we do actually see uh, an improvement in performance here. Basically, we get an average of 50.8 FPS with the faster CPU versus 41.8. But you can still see that. So we are, again, hitting CPU limit there, even when we've thrown the most powerful CPU that we can possibly muster at this problem. We're still getting uh, a pretty glitchy ride. And if you look at the single card, and the green line is it's much smoother. Much smoother, and it's basically the case that there are games which just run better with a single card. And is it? It could be a driver issue, I suppose. A driver overhead. I mean, who knows? But basically, the scaling here is uh, well. Hmm. We're getting 31% scaling at 1440p and about 42% scaling on 4K. Yeah. So it. Uh it's using the memory bandwidth to its advantage for 4K. Basically, 4K, we're rendering much uh, more in the way of pixels. So GPU is more of a bottleneck, which basically means that we get less stutter, lower frame rates, but you know we are getting 4K presentation. OK, so it's The Witcher 3, and it's another game where we've got some really severe frame time issues. Yeah, and this is the uh, infamous the thing that started off the whole FCAT phenomena, uh, which is micro stutter. If you look here at both of the crossfire configurations, you'll see that the frame time graph is just spiking all over the place in a kind of regular manner. And especially on the orange line here. The crossfire. Exactly, crossfire. And with a single card, you get just, you know, much better consistency. It looks like the uh, you know, higher resolution you push, the more radical the frame time issues. It sort of generally tends to change, but yeah, basically here where we have a sort of more steady scene, it does seem to be the 4K that is causing problems from a micro stuttering perspective. I mean, general scalability here at 1440p, we're only getting a 35% boost to overall performance. Fury X in Crossfire at 4K, we're getting about 55. So, you know, we're, as you can see from the frame rate graphs, we are actually getting increased performance. And it's quite dramatic, but the quality of the experience here really isn't particularly good when you're looking at the sheer stutter here. I mean, check that out, my God. It's a bit of a shame. I mean, if I had forked out the money for this sort of configuration, this game perhaps This is the thing, you off. know, this is a reason why a lot of enthusiast gamers don't go for SLI or Crossfire setups because it introduces a new variable that often has a devastating effect on the overall experience. Yeah, not all games can account for it. It's also pretty much a textbook example of why frame time analysis has become so important because it basically gives you much more of an idea about the quality of the overall experience. Taken um, on the, uh, you know, looking at the left side graph, you'd think it, it was fine, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's quite interesting that we are getting like massive boosts of performance uh, generally, uh, relatively speaking. So for example, Fury X Crossfire 4K, we're going to 48.7 FPS up from 31.5. But I'll tell you what, you know, with frame times like that, I would prefer the single card, even if it's a slower performance level. Mm, I agree. 
So Far Cry 4, interesting it, stuff here. And this is really quite fascinating when we look at the scalability uh, metrics here. You know, 1440p, we are getting just a 31.5% increase in performance from having that extra card. But if we look at 4K, then uh, we're getting a massive 85% increase in overall performance. Now, the interesting thing to bear in mind here is, check out the crossfire lines for both 1440p and 4K. Basically, you're getting almost identical performance. Yeah. So basically what we're hitting here is another system bottleneck and I suspect that would be CPU. We literally can't run this game faster with the AMD driver. But despite all that, it does look like you're getting more consistency with 4K on the single GPU. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's basically because we are hitting CPU limits with all of the other configurations. Right, it's Crisis 3. Crisis 3, I absolutely love testing this game for multi-GPU setups and it's quite interesting to see the results that we're getting here. 1440p, there is only a kind of 26% increase in overall performance as we move across the clip. At 4K, where the GPU is much more of a bottleneck in a single card scenario, that increases significantly. We're at 55.8 there. So yeah, good stuff there. But, you know, the big question of whether you can run this particular game at 60 FPS with a dual card configuration we're not there. I no, mean, even at 1440p it's still... Lowest recorded frame rate with two cards, 35 FPS, with one card, 22 FPS. I mean, it just goes to show how much of a load 4K really is. And uh, I have actually had a really decent experience with this at 4K though, and it involved dropping to the high settings. Is that a perceptible difference from very high? Um, generally in terms of shadows and LODs, yeah, you, you, can you can certainly tell the difference there, but you know, I would take it for the 60 hertz. So even then I had to drop shadows down to medium to get a consistent performance level. So, you know, we've got $1,200 of GPU here and we're still having to compromise and I'm not sure whether enthusiast gamers would be too infused by that scenario. Assassin's Creed. Now we get absolutely fantastic scalability here, generally speaking. We are getting 91.6% of additional performance with Crossfire and we are getting, uh, well actually it seems to be well over 100% uh, on 1440p, which is... Yeah, that really stands out. Just looking at it from afar, that is the yeah, and this big is a, gain. This is an example of a game where you are mostly GPU bound, and it's interesting to see with two GPUs just how much we can push it, and it's the best example of scalability in our whole list, I think. So yeah, really interesting stuff there. Um, I'm not bit, sure... It's a bit well, disappointing on the 4K front. You know, the 4K front, again, you are not going to be able to run this game at 4K at 60fps, even with two $650 GPUs running in parallel and you'll still note that there are issues at 4k with those frame time spikes look at those uh, spikes on the massive red. lurches down yeah basically we are hitting VRAM limits there Assassin's Creed needs more than four gigs to run at extreme settings at higher resolution that's a shame so uh, moving right on to Battlefield 4. Battlefield, um, yeah, this is another game where we get excellent scalability at both resolutions. At both resolutions, about 80, 81% increase moving from one car to two. And I think, you know, actually something which we haven't really tackled during the commentary here is that in a lot of scenarios, we are seeing that Fury X in Crossfire is offering the same sort of frame rates at 4K as one Fury at 1440p. Mm. Pretty impressive scalability there in terms of pixel count. Judging by this compared to the other tests, this is uh, one of the better scaling games of the bunch. Yeah, and this is a game where you could conceivably, with a tiny bit of uh, options tweaking, get this to run at a really consistent 4K 60 FPS. And I think that's the case of whether you're using eight cores as we're doing here or four cores. So yeah, really, really good game for GPU scalability. So, Call of Duty, and yeah, it's not uh, looking too good on the frame times ever. You know, it's always a trouble game in terms of the right hand side of things. But yeah, the, well, you know, the problem is with Call of Duty is that it just doesn't particularly run very well in, in any kind of SLI scenario. You can see here that using Crossfire, we lurch between some get, getting some pretty good games and getting none at all. I mean, it's just not particularly optimized for a multi GPU. So one of the better cases, it seems, is uh, Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, Shadow of Mordor doesn't really have that much of a CPU overhead, and what that generally tends to translate into is excellent scalability with multiple GPUs. And here we are seeing a 68% increase in performance at 1440p, and we are getting a massive 81% at 4K. And I think what really is 
The standout for me here is that if you look at the frame time graph, it's pretty much rock solid, totally consistent throughout the clip, and that basically translates into an excellent experience during gameplay. Very nice. And it's Rise. Rise Son of Rome, 1440p, not very good results here, 17.5% scaling, uh, but 4K, wow, 72% uh, in terms of increased frame rates here. We're going from 35.9 FPS average to 61.8. Now, what I will say is that the 61.8 is an average. The lows are still low, uh, a good 23 FPS there, really not particularly impressive. So yeah, it's one of these games where you're still going to have to adjust your settings carefully to get a consistent glitch-free experience. Hmm, that's fair to say. Well, Rich, what's your takeaway here? Yeah, the takeaway. I think what really surprised me the most was how, in several games, running two Fury X's in Crossfire provided the same sort of ballpark performance as running just one of them at 1440p. So two cards are basically providing 2.25 times Yeah, resolution. basically, yeah, one card at 1440p is like two cards at 4K. It's really quite interesting. Mm. But we still managed to hit CPU limits regardless, uh, even with this monstrous CPU. And that's exactly what happened with the 4790K. We get a bit of extra performance, but not really enough to warrant buying a $1,000 CPU. But we're still hitting those CPU limits, aren't we, in some games? Far Cry 4, Far for example. Far Cry 4, yeah, yeah, that was really interesting as well. Fantastic frame rates, but we're so high that we're actually hitting CPU limit, that means stutter. And that's kind of my concern where we're going with uh, this sort of ever-increasing level of GPU power. I don't know whether it's game design or limits of DirectX, but my worry is that the pace of development in graphics from uh, AMD and NVIDIA, it isn't being matched by everything else in the surrounding PC ecosphere. I suppose the glimmer of hope is DirectX 12 then. Yeah, DirectX 12 of... should hopefully be a game changer. Anyway, we had some really interesting results here and I hope you found the video interesting. But that's all we got for now. Uh, remember that you can support our work with a like and a subscription. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.